start with the most basic thing. What does endodontics even mean? What's the root of it? So endo, of course, is from Greek endon, which is within, okay? And dontics is from Greek odon, tooth. So inside the tooth, within the tooth, that's what we do. I like to think of the analogy of the root is like a Twinkie cake, okay? The cake is like the hard root of your tooth, and it's really the cream filling that we're after. We're gonna clean out the cream filling and then reseal the Twinkie cake. That's what a root canal is, and that resonates with patients. So, but this is actually the tooth that we're gonna, that we're gonna treat today. So here's our chief complaint. So with our patient, um, healthy patient, no medications, um, patient has had some symptoms for about a month. Uh, what happened was as he went, he had a crown, it had some leakage under it, so the dentist removed the crown. Did a bit of a buildup after removing decay, so he put some IRM in there, which you'll see, and then he made a nice temporary crown. So the patient has a temporary crown in place. So I'll be removing the temporary crown. You'll see that kind of temporary buildup and we'll access right in through that. First step again, we're gonna look at access opening. We've all kind of, kind of taken a look, Frank. We all looked at the, um, at the x-rays and, and the scan that we did. So now we wanna recognize that we wanna to try to make what's well, basically gonna be a little bit of a um, triangular, not triangular, but a more of a rectangular form here. Now this is that IRM that I mentioned that his dentist had placed to build up the tooth because under the crown there was decay, okay? So we'll get started here. And you'll see as we'll make just a little approach, I kind of make just a miniature form of what I expect the access to look like. You'll see some of the dentin come through here. And some of this IRM will probably just chip right away. And if it's loose, we kind of don't really want it there. So in this case, I'm gonna kind of just buzz it out of there. And so now this is all the dentin. There we go. So this change in coloration here is probably almost the beginning of the pulp chamber. So now we'll make a little more of an approach here. I'm gonna step off and you'll see just a little bit more. We're gonna make a little progression. What we're trying to get into is just the very top of that pulp chamber. Because once we get to that point, we really know where we are. So I'll just go real slow here, just step by step, so you can really see the progression. Okay, so now we look down in there, and we start to just give it a little, up. Oh, hello, see that? So that's step number one. Once you can get to this point, Frank, are you feeling that at all? You do feel it a touch, which is why I'm asking, because it's very common, even with full anesthetic, I did cold again, he didn't feel anything. Once you reach into that tissue, as I mentioned, it changes. All right, Frank, just a little pinch here for a second, and then it's gonna fade right away. So I get right back to that spot. You're gonna feel me here for just a second. A little bit of pressure. Okay, so now we can see a little more of the reaction of the pulp there, okay? And now we're gonna start to really take off the top covering of the canal, of the chamber. So now that I know the depth, I know where I am. So I'm gonna stop right here just to show you. So now when we take a look in here, number one, we can see the tissue. And now we start to see, this is all still the roof of the chamber here that has to be uncovered. So now we're in, are you feeling that at all, Frank? Are you better now? Okay. So we can kind of get in toward the, the mesial, toward the distal, but I can tell we still have a lot to uncover, so we'll go for that now. So a little more noise. So now we're gonna see the distal here, and then the mesials here. And now what I would say is what's a very important tool in your, in your bag is gonna be the ultrasonic tips. And this is a great time to introduce them because at this point we have you know, still some pulp horn here that we have to remove. And using a burr is one way, but the ultrasonic is just a really safe way. And you can see exactly what you're doing. So we're gonna use a, my trusty buck one tip. And we're gonna get that going here. So just a little vibration, Frank, just has a little different sound to it. And again, we're gonna get it in position. You can just see without water spray, just how wonderful the visibility is here. And now I can just kind of refine my, my prep. I can get down and start to kind of extend the walls outward. Do a little air water. Lots of rinsing, because you 
You want to remove the debris and be able to see really well. Okay, so now we're starting to get a really clear look at everything here. So again, the distal is pretty straightforward. You can really see, again, we talked about law of symmetry, pretty central. Now when we come to the mesial, we want to try to define the mesial buckle here. Okay, you guys can see that. And then when I shift over, again, law of symmetry, so equidistant from that midline, I'm going to fall into the mesial lingual here. So now will be, in essence, the first time I'm going to actually introduce a couple of hand files. So again, you can see here. So I'm going to always put just a little tiny curvature on the end, every file, because there's no straight canal, and having just that little curvature allows it to traverse through the canal, okay? So I'm going to go ahead, and we have a little, little slick gel on here, and I'm just going to feel, so that distal canal is, you know, nice and open. Now I'm going to come toward the mesiolingual. Now the next step, in just a second here, is what do, what do I want to get out of here? I want to get all this heme out of there, all that tissue, so I'm going to use a little irrigation in just a moment. So we always start off with, with water, because of course we don't want to introduce our cleaning solutions until we're absolutely certain of where we are, right? That there's no leakage or decay or anything where it could escape. So I'm going to go ahead, and of course I have my master delivery tip here, and I'm going to be my first little cleaning irrigation. Great. All right, looking good here. But we'll take a quick look inside now. So now I've, I've essentially established a glide path to a size 20 from the top of the canal to about the middle of the route, okay? And then at this point, that's all I'm trying to do, trying to kind of clear the way. Let's take a look inside now and see how we're looking. Okay, so we can see there's definitely still a little more tissue there. Just trying to balance us out here, okay. So let me have the Explorer ones. So when you see something like this up on the wall here, you want to make sure that that's not attached. You could have still a little pulp horn. And I just do it because I've always done it this way and I think it gives such a nice shape, but I use three shaper files for, for my access here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start with just a little, not trying to go as far as can go, but for instance, in a distal like this, I might find that I actually reach right to the stopper. So just passively trying to open the coronal third, just remove some of that coronal dentin. And again, I'm gonna kind of work my way into the mesia buckle here. Just kind of taking little bites out of it, trying to just get it opened up a bit. And then the mesiolingual. Just coronal orifice shaping, just opening the top of the canal. It makes it everything safer and easier later. So you can kind of get a sense here of the opening there, okay? All right, so now when we take a look, we can see really clearly we've got a nice coronal opening to both of the mesials. Here, we've got nice distal here, okay? So now this is ready to be irrigated, and then once I've irrigated, I'm gonna go ahead and dry and measure with my, with my Apex ID. Okay, so I'm gonna again, I'm gonna just do um, a number 10 K file, little lubricant, and now we'll start with the distal. So I like to place the file in, and then I'll, I'll go ahead and clip it here. Go with, let me have an 8C. So none of these want to be patent, which is okay if that's what they are. You know, sometimes at the apex we saw that there was some bit of, of calcification occurring apically, and sometimes that little foramen will just close off. Okay, and now we're patent on the mesial buckle, no problem, right? That's how it would normally sound. So once I've reached the apex, that calibrates the instrument. I'm going to back it off just a little bit here. Bear with me. I'm going to get my, my marking here on the mesiolingual. You see I'm at 0 0.5, right? And now I'm just going to measure that. So I have my reference point marked. And so the mesial buckle is 17, okay? So now, feeling very encouraged from getting patency on the mesial buckle, I'm going to give the mesiolingual another try and see if maybe even just the bend of the file after going through the mesial aspect can find its way to the lingual. 
I hurt you at all, Frank? Oh, good. And it just does not seem to want to be patent. So I'm going to measure that and see how close it is to that 17 of the mesia buckle. Seventeen. So there we are. So usually in a case, and it's not that uncommon that you would not get Peyton on a canal. So we're ready to move forward. So we have our lengths, and now we'll do a little more irrigation. And now my goal here at this point is going to be to really instrument these canals. So I'm always kind of comparing where I am with my reference point, and then from there being able to feel with my fingers how far I need to go. So. A lot of times I know if I've reached it just based on what my eyes see and what my fingers feel. Again, always a little curve on the, on the file. So then the next step will be full rotary instrumentation. Here's my ML1. Okay, so if I'm able to reach working length with ML1, then I don't need 2506 or 2504, and that's what these are right here. Now I can tell you in, this, in these mesial canals, I may need them both. So I'm going to crown down to reach 25 at the tip, 25 at my working length. From there, it's simply apical enlargement. So, so my sequence, ML1, 2508, if it doesn't reach working length, SM2, 2506, and then I can apically enlarge. I rarely use the 2504, but I love having it there, and I have a feeling I may need it here for the mesial lingual. And then let's go ahead for it. So we'll start ML1, 2508. Full rotation, 500 rotations per minute. And I'll start in the distal. So I'm assuming this will just kind of try to situate this so you can see as best as you can. And again, take it down, hit my reference point, and out. It's an in and out. 2508, ML1, mesiolingual. Going to be gentle. I can feel it really grab there. That's nice. Got a nice glide path. Again, mesia buckle. See if I can find it here. Sometimes I'll have to reorient with my mirror. Mesia buckle. Again, no way I'm forcing that down there, right? So I, I knew based on my hand filing effort that I'm going to have to go to the 2506 now. Come back to mesia buckle. Mesia buckle, right down to my reference, and out. Done. That's the beauty of TF. It's a really great performing file. So I've crowned down, done crowning down. Now I'm apically enlarging. Okay, let's irrigate one. So always irrigating, always kind of clearing out the chamber, refreshing the hypochlorite. So this is 3006, and boom, right to the reference. In and out, one, two, three. Adjust my length. Mesiolingual, take it right down to the reference and out. You can see the debris on it, so you can see it's doing its work, mostly there in the middle third, which is what we would expect, right? Because that's essentially still where it's enlarging. Apically, there's not a huge difference from 25 to 30. Eventually, we'll see the debris really just on the apical end. And then again, I'm going to just kind of get down here, in and out. Okay? So we're moving right along, going up the chain. Now we're going to 3506. All right, so again, just to be sure, boom, right there. Always a nice feeling when you get that now to a 3506, and I know that I've prepared that where I wanted it, kind of reached my goal on that one. Now let's go to the mesial buckle. 4004, we're going to get that right in place here. So this essentially will barely even bind at all until I reach the apex, because now at this point it's nothing but apical enlargement. And then finally, 5004. Right to length. So that is how we do it. So now the canals are shaped. So again, just to show you here, just to give you a sense, look how nice and clean. Look how good that's looking now. All shaped and ready to be, ready to be sealed up. So I'll place my 50. Again, I'm going to confirm radiographically as well as clinically to measure them to make sure. So by that I mean I'll take this out at the, the reference point here and just give it a little measure. 
16, right on the button, right? So you want to verify radiographically, but you also want to verify clinically. So here's my mesiolingual. And then my mesiobuckle. So we like to use the XCP for the digital sensors. Because if I put this right over the access, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit my cones. So I clamp it a little closer to the cord. So now when I put this in his mouth and he closes, there's plenty of space for the cones. But then because now my x-ray is shifted over, then I just line it up a little bit off of center of the circle. Does that make sense? And that way I'm capturing this and I have this nice indicator. So, okay, so again, I'm going to shift this just a touch. And I also want to have, can you guys see this angle? So I'm coming up from this angle so I can be sure to catch the apices. Okay. Very good, Frank. Let me slip that out for you. See what we got. Okay, looking good. You see that we're look just a little bit short on the distal. Maybe I know it's hard to see, um, but we are just like maybe I'll measure it out. Maybe a millimeter or a millimeter and a half. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remeasure where that cone sits because maybe it came out a little bit while I was measuring. You know, so I've, I first want to confirm that it's seated in place all the way. So let's do that first. So first I can remove now my mesiobuccal and my mesiolingual. And now let's measure that distobuccal. So I'm going to clip it here. So it's at 15. So when I measured it the first time, it was at 16, but when I seated it back, it's 15. So what I like to do at this point is just because it's obvious there's something there, is I'll just make another pass with my ML3, my 5004, just to make sure there's no debris or anything down there. So I'll go to the 50, and I'm going to pull just slightly out of focus here for a second. Actually, that looks pretty good. And just kind of give it a little feel here. Good. Okay, and now I'll try it back in. It's, yeah, it kind of engaged a second there. It really did. I'll give it a little measure here. And now that's just kind of like 15 and a half. So again, because I know that the um, it was closed anyway, remember I couldn't get patency, so it's probably a little irregular down there. What I'll do at this point is I will go through my irrigation. That very well may eliminate any debris, but certainly some sealer getting down in there as well. But if you think about a closed off end, it's probably not flush like a flat like a floor. So there could be a little projection or something. So I feel good about that. But I do like to do some ultrasonic irrigation as well. So the, the passive ultrasonic technique and I find it to be, it was really what I relied on before the endovac, but now I find that the combination of the two is really something. So you'll see just how it's able to activate the, um, the irrigant. So again, place some irrigant into the chamber. And then we're going to do a little, yeah, yeah. so we're going to do a little ultrasonic activation. You'll see the effect it has on the, on the solution. Get a little mirror back here as well. You can take this basically right to working length, but you can see that there's quite a bit of that energized activity in there. And we do it in a 20 second interval. Then I'll go to the next canal. This is mesiolingual. And again, you can really see the activity there. Cavitation. Just making sure it, it gives some nice bombardment of the solution against the walls. About 20 strokes there, and then we go to the mesia buckle. Okay, and then I'll do a fresh irrigation, and then with it, kind of clear that out. Now I'm going to introduce my smear clear, so my EDTA. And then we'll go through another sequence of the ultrasonic. 
So again, the irrigation is just so critical to what we're trying to accomplish here. So again, you can see the activity there. You guys see that? Great. Okay, so after I do that, then I'm ready for my macro cannula for my endovac, and this is the best part. We love our endovac. Let's see if I can situate this. So the, the two-handed part we don't love as much, but we do love it. Let me get this situated right. So I'm going to get this down in the distal, bring my master delivery tip, and you can see the flow up through the master. And do a little up and down. Try to clear any debris. See the flow up there? That makes me really happy when I see that. You can see nice clear solution. I know I'm clean. Usually think about 10 second cycles. A little bleeding there, you can see that now. And that's okay, we know it was inflamed. And then lastly, the mesia buckle. Sometimes you will, again, put just a little bend in it in order to orient it into the canal. The micro is really the key. Um, and this is really the best part of the whole thing. So we'll get this. This is set to 16 for my distal. Get it right down into, into working length position. And then now the magic happens. So I know that that solution has gone to the apex and come back and that makes me so happy. You're getting a really nice exchange, fresh sodium hypochlorite. We know now more than ever, we used to leave sodium hypochlorite in the tooth and just walk away for 10 minutes thinking we were doing a great service. What we didn't realize was how quickly it's actually deactivated by all the debris in the dentin. So it's all about this exchange of fresh sodium hypochlorite, which is just what this delivers for me. Okay, so we've done our full irrigation, and now we're going to go ahead and dry the canals. And again, not a whole lot of work to be done here after the micro kind of gets in there. So you can see it comes out, maybe just a little bit of moisture here in the distal. And then I'm going to go ahead with my mesiolingual. Really. Just a little touch, a little, little touch there. And then, easy to buckle. So, the cones really need to be lubricated when they go in position, and hypochlorite is a lubricant to some degree, but not as much as the, the sealer. So I'll try it with the sealer and remeasure it again and just make sure that we're, we're where we need to be. So I have a nice, Nice amount of sealer here on the end. Take that in here to the distal. Get it in position. Get a little measurement here. So again, I'm just hovering just, I'm, I'm at like 15 and a half. You know, and so given the circumstances, I'm gonna depend on my sealer to kind of help me out. And, and when we do the warm vertical, we have the advantage of the sealer being able to fill into the, into the area, so I'm gonna Got to work my sealer down. So now we're going to be using, of course, our, our uh, elements free unit. And so again, we're going to go ahead. We're going to just kind of, the focus is to just kind of do a little down pack, get to about five millimeters from the working length and in a short canal, that's not too far. Little wiggle, separation burst, and there you have it. So you can see the little, got a percha down there. I'm going to go ahead and increase us back to 10 so you can get a little better look at that. So when I see a little orange spot like that, I'm liking my day. Yeah, so I'll give it a little compression, especially given this situation, a little bit of an irregular root end. Again, we know we're dealing with a lower second molar. The anatomy just tends to be a little different sometimes. So let's really get that in there and give, it, give the sealer an opportunity to move laterally and move around into the dental tubules. Actually, I'm going to go mesia buckle first because that was the one that was patent. So if I typically know I have one that's patent, I'll do that one first. Basing off of the cone beam, I'm, I'm assuming that they actually are separate canals. Remember, on the x-ray here, they're kind of coincided, but I know from the cone beam it looked like they were separate all the way. So now we'll go ahead and mesia buckle in place. I like to put it in the canal, and then I'll give it just a little lift. 
That allows the sealer to coat the wall a little bit and then push it back down into position again. And this allows me to make sure that I have some nice sealer coating the walls. Again, we're gonna take our system B tip, activate, go down just to about five millimeters from the apex, separation bursts, and out. And I know the textbook says that you should probably hold it for a little longer, but the truth is we don't find that that's absolutely necessary with the given materials. When, when we were dealing with um, less defined cones and things like that, it was a little more critical. But now I'm gonna use a little vertical pressure here. And now there's my nice orange spot. This still just hanging out there too. And that guy, where is she? There she is, bless you. Okay, one more. So we have our mesiolingual now, All right? There's. Again, down to about five millimeters, separation burst and out. Okay, so we've got some nice thermoplasticized gutta percha. So again, so the key here is, is that I'm going to take a little bit of sealer here and just kind of, let me see if I can get this in. So we'll take a little sealer, just like that. Can you see that? So then when we bring that in, you'll see that the sealer works its way down right up against the apical plug. Okay, and now it's, I'm going to hold it there for about three seconds. And then now when I press the button, the, the gutter perch is all warm where the plug was, where I'm extruding it, and in between we had that nice little bit of, of sealer. So obviously a little excess here, and that can usually just be clipped off real easily with your plugger. And now we'll just work it down there and see if you guys can see this a little better. I'm going to take it through a little bit of sealer, just a nice little dollop of sealer here on the end. You can see that. Bring it in, allow it to feel the contact with the apical plug, and then you hit the button and let it just push you right out, just like so. Clean it up. This is the mesia buckle. Put it in, press the button. And it really does just kind of push you out of there. See that? Okay. So let's take a look at the final here. And then we'll make a couple retentive features. Just trying to clear away some of the sealer. Okay, and plug her one more time. What's nice is you can really see that there is a real presence of the sealer um, in the canal, and especially coronally. And that's good because as this you know hardens as a bioceramic, it's going to give me just another little layer of protection there. So we just make it nice and neat, and you can see that that little isthmus connecting the two canals is all filled as well with gutta perch and sealer. So now let's make our post space. Um, so I do use, we use these little, little foam pellets as opposed to cotton. They stick less. It's nice because when you take the, the filling out, they kind of just bounce out at you as opposed to the cotton filaments. We'll kind of situate this right in here. And then we're ready to, um, to place our temporary filling. So we use an IRM type material. So just condense that in. And then, you know, the last step in this is, is placing the temporary crown on. I'm going to take a final x-ray here to make sure everything's just as it needs to be. Because I don't really know that right this moment. So I want to see what, and especially when, you know, if, if there's, you know, calcification in the distal, we didn't get patency. The, the film came up looking a little short, right, with the cone. So I want to kind of see what that looks like before I commit to resealing that temporary crown. 
So nice rinse for you, Frank. You did amazing. We just want to double check and make sure everything is just so, okay? Let's get a little picture here. All right. All good. Looks great, Frank. I would have to say, how about a good cheer for Frank, man?